Oh my goodness, howdy, Athens. <laughs> wow, what an amazing word camp. Wow, this has really come together. It's been so incredible. And gosh, what a venue. I know. I feel so honored to be here with all of y'all, which is FM Matias here on stage. We have so much exciting stuff to share with y'all. And um, I think we'll let you dive into it. Happy to kick us off. Hey, WordPress, I don't know if you heard lately, but you are now 20 years old as a project. Congratulations. <laughs> Before we get started, I do want to give us a couple of updates from things that we've talked about over the last probably six months or so, a little bit from last WordCamp Europe and a little bit from State of the Word. The first thing that I want to talk about is actually our WordCamp reactivation. So you all obviously are part of that, but last year at this time, we had held eight in-person WordCamps and as of right now, as of this WordCamp, I believe, we are at, uh, we're on track to have 25 WordCamps in the first half of the year, which is more than we had all year last year. <laughs> and that's because you all are doing all of this with us. Huge thanks to the community team. Huge thanks especially to the folks who are helping all of our organizers relearn how to do all of this wonderful connection of our community. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are one of our long-term members of the community or you just are really interested to learn how you can get more knowledge and understanding of how we try to make WordPress uh, be organized and functional and working together, we have the Community Summit coming up in August of this year on the 22nd and 23rd, so just before WordCamp US, where we all also should be, um, barring any emergencies, because never say never. Um, if you would like to attend that or want to raise a topic of your own that you think is incredibly important for the community to be discussing right now, um, or if you want to apply for uh, travel assistance or to our company's support travel assistance. You can do all of that over on communitysummit.wordcamp.org. If I said that too fast, don't worry. We've got social folks who are putting that out there as well soon on the hashtag WCEU2023. Um, and we also have a little bit of update on Five for the Future. So that was a big topic last year. Uh, and so far this year, we've seen some pretty healthy growth, uh, not only in active contributors overall, but also in uh, specifically individual pledges to the Five for the Future program, as well as company pledges. So again, thank you all for your constant support of this excellent project. And we're going to touch super briefly before I hand it over to Matthias on extending the ecosystem. We've been talking a lot about one of our big goals, which is to get open source alternatives to proprietary systems into as many uh, tools as we can for the WordPress project. A quick update on Openverse. That project has been with us for a while. I heard it. You can applaud. We love WordPress. <laughs> extra special exciting announcement, we finally got it on, onto its own home, openverse.org. <laughs> we have nearly 8 million images and audio files. 800 on million. 800 million. That's way more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> 800 million uh, images and audio files on it, um, which I think is incredibly exciting. And then, of course, in 6.2, we made it available in the editor. So you can hit for slash openverse slash media, and it comes up as an option. And that's super exciting for me, of course. Live translations oh. are powered by the... Sorry. Before I get to this one, we, um, I'm sure all of you have heard about, at this point, um, Playground, WP Playground, anyone? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
For the last remaining five of you who have not heard about it, you are now going to hear about it. Um, it is one of my current favorite, favorite explorations that we have going on in the WordPress project. Live translations are powered by the new WordPress Playground API. You can now build WordPress applications that run instantly in the browser and don't require a PHP server. To get started, go to playground.wordpress.net and use URL parameters to pre-install any theme and a plugin from the WordPress directory. For example, a pendant theme. Once you're happy with the result, embed this live playground on your website using an iframe. And if you need even more, JSON Blueprints allow you to provide step-by-step -step WordPress setup instructions. Run any PHP code, pre-install custom plugins, import site content, and more. This is how live translations are set up. And for even more control, use the JavaScript API. And what can we build with WordPress Playground? Let's take a look at a few inspiring projects. A live plugin demo on your website, just like live translations. A pull request previewer, like this one for Gutenberg. An interactive PHP code editor that enables learning directly in a browser and even on your mobile phone. A local development environment that works either in a terminal or as a Visual Studio Code plugin and starts WordPress on your computer even if you don't have PHP, MySQL or Docker installed. Learn more at developer.wordpress.org slash playground and start building with WordPress Playground today. Yeah, <laughs> but before we jump in, I just want to say how incredible this is. I mean, when yes. WordPress started, you used to have to download a zip file, upload it to a server, configure MySQL, like all these sorts of steps. And one of our innovations was the famous five minute install that we tried to you know, shorten the installation time to be faster. But literally now with WordPress Playground, for those who don't know, you it runs WordPress inside of your browser. <laughs> so it spins up a whole virtual instance using Amazing. technology called Wasm. So we went from a five minute install to like a 500 millisecond <laughs> install. <laughs> like literally like it's... <laughs> I'm so excited for how, I'm, I'm sure many of you at Contributor Day got to play with it and how easy it makes. So the things we just showed where you can like preload themes, translations. This is now like an instant developer environment for anyone who wants to play with WordPress. Um, and as you know, billions of more people come online on new devices, all of this runs on mobile phones too. So literally you can run WordPress on your phone in the browser, <laughs> which is ridiculous. It's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just, Playground, I, I said it in the state of the word, but Playground just blows my mind. It's the closest thing to magic I've seen yes. <laughs> in my years working on WordPress. And but uh, it's, now- It's also worth mentioning, because I am a, a big celebrator of all of our wins, I would just want to mention that this has been featured as like a WordPress uh, experiment in all of the uh, Google I.O. and Google I.O. Connect events. Oh, nice. Yes, and so like they're paying attention to what we're doing, and I think that's great. So congratulations, all of you, for that fantastic work with this fantastic magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna hand it over to a, a face we all know, Matthias Ventura. What do you wanna tell us about Gutenberg today? Thank you, thank you. I think the, the other cool thing about the playground is that I think we keep finding use cases like day to day. Yes. I think some of the workshops we're using it to like get people quickly started in the sessions and so on. So it's, it's really cool to just see the the, our table goes. lead at Contributor Day stood up and during his wrap-up and was like, it turns out it's contagious. We have four <laughs> tables. It was great. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the, the GlotPress project as well is using it for like live translations and stuff. It's yes. really cool. Yeah. Okay, I'll move on to um, the little G project. The little G. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best term. So we, we, have a, we have a video to show you that I'm really excited about because I think it... Um, Tells a bit of the story for like, now like around six years so far between when we started phase one all the way to phase two. Uh, and it, I think it's nice that it goes from like words to blocks to full design. So we'll just want to show you. All 
Gutenberg. your comment because there was music oh, that was that was all Gutenberg everything you just saw was created with Gutenberg yeah yeah all the, all the designs are like block designs or patterns or something which is to me I was I was reflecting the other day like since we started with a wasn't really like something that we planned but I think the way that it has opened up um, the ability for like the design community to contribute to to the project directly without depending on like a developer to translate their ideas into a design I think to me it's really it's really rewarding because I started my journey doing themes, so it's like right. it really like speaks closely to me, um, and I'm I'm really curious to see how like new generations embrace these uh, sort of like the expressive capabilities that WordPress uh, needs to keep evolving. I don't know if either of you heard, but I believe that our theme uh, group at Contributor Day created a new community theme from scratch using only Gutenberg the whole way through. Yes. Nice. Yes, Maggie agrees. Nice. <laughs> confirmation from the audience. That's typical WordCamp. I love it. Thank you. I'll move on to the next slide, which is we'll talk a little bit about 6.3. We've been saying that 6.3 was going to be the sort of the wrap of these first two phases. Doesn't mean like our work is done, of course. We'll right. have a lot of things to continue doing. But it's like I think we're closing a bit of a chapter here. So can I, can I interject with the four phases of Gutenberg? Yeah. If you remember when we started Gutenberg, we said there was going to be uh, four phases. The first phase being when we uh, Gutenberg for the block editor for editing post. Then we would go outside of the box and ed allow you to edit a whole site in phase two. Phase three is going to be all about collaboration and workflow. And then phase four will be multilingual. Yeah. So when Matthias refers to we're almost done with phase two, and how many years in now? <laughs> Depending on how you count. Yeah, it. Depending on yeah. how you count, yeah. <laughs> how many? Well, I think the Parthenon was like nine years, so I think like <laughs> we're getting close to that. I, yeah. I will always now refer to the Parthenon in our timeline for scale. Cool. Great, sounds yeah. good to me. Beautiful. And one, one of the goals in 6.3 is also like to bring a lot of these features together into a more cohesive narrative. Like there's been a lot of features that can be seen sort of isolated. In 6.3, we're really trying to bring it all together. So I'll be talking through a small demo. Hopefully, you can see some of the details. Um, but this is stuff that you can already try in the plugin. We're still a few weeks away from the first betas. So if you want to try, you can install the plugin and play with it. Um, one of the main focuses, we're introducing this sort of Wayfinder tool where you can run commands and navigate to different pages quickly. Um, before that, the editor was really sort of focus on single pages and so on. So now you can just navigate the whole site, customize, like get into the style, the style book. We're introducing uh, style revisions as well. So you'll be able to sort of compare how your, all your changes look. And in, in the sidebar, you can see all the, all the variations there. We want to add like a side-by-side -side comparison as well. Um, but it's really like coming together to, to tell the story. I think the style book is also really interesting for some like enterprise use cases where they can sort of have a style guide and see like without getting into like a single post or so to see how um, the whole design of blocks is coming together. Um, the navigation menus is uh, we've been wrestling with it for a few times and I think we're like uh, finally consolidating it so that you can here it's showing like how to edit some of those navigations without getting into the nitty gritty of the editor. You can do it from the outside. So that sort of balance is the, one of the main things we want to, we want to get here. Um, you will see that it bounces between like this sort of zoom out view of your site and getting into the site. So there's, there are some activities that you can do without 
getting boggled down into the complexity of the full editor and stuff that you can do outside. One thing I'm really like excited about is that uh, this is showing the ability to sort of have like a more clear delineation between what is the content and what is the template. So if you're editing a page, you can like focus on the title, the content, and so on. If you want to edit the template, it's going to tell you like, oh, hey, this is part of the template. It applies to the whole site. So you can like smoothly get into that state and edit everything. Um, but the delineation is a bit more clear, which is a feedback we've been hearing from yeah. users, you all, developers, and so on. Um, it's a, there's, of course, like a ton of refinements to just the interactivity, the drag and drop experience, performance. There's a whole lot of accessibility refinements that are really cool to see. Um, we're introducing the, finally, the ability to save your own patterns so people nice. can, um, you'll see it now, you can just have some design, you create your own pattern, you save it, and there's now a place to see essentially all the patterns. Someone's excited. Thank you. <laughs> All the patterns on the site are going to be accessible from this sort of a slight zoom out view, where you can see the ones that are coming from core, the ones that are from the theme, and your own, like, say, patterns. Um, you'll be able to see them in a, this sort of mosaic view, um, and you'll be able to edit them in isolation as well. So you can just go into and customize the thing and reuse it across the, across the site. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's about it for 6.3. Just. Just it. That's it. <laughs> so we'll be now, moving to Q&A now, I guess. All right. Now it is uh, totally open for questions. I'm going to do the logistics, because that is obviously my job. So if you would like to ask questions, we have a stand mic there, a stand mic there, like in the middle of the aisles. We also have one floating mic in case folks cannot get down here to these. If you are the mic holder, shout. Oh, there. Moritz is our mic holder in case. You'll probably need to go up to the higher things in case anyone there wants to, yeah. to go. All right. And um, it looks like we already have some people lining up. but. I actually have some prizes for the first three question askers. <laughs> um, these are custom. Uh, an amazing designer friend of mine designed these uh, little magnetic pop sockets that have the WordPress logo. So it just kind of, if you have an iPhone, it goes right on the back and then allows you to. Uh, uh, Without all the sticky stuff on your phone. So I, th there's only a few of these in the world right now, and I have three of them right here. So, uh, do, you, do you have an iPhone, first question? No. Oh. Uh. Okay, I'm going to give it to you anyway, and then you get to re-gift it to someone exactly. who does. Yes. It'll be like your magic token. So, should I ask my question? Yeah, please introduce okay. yourself. Thank Let you. us know who you are. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Milana Tap, again, from Serbia. Uh, and I have a question about sponsoring contributors. Uh, there is a platform, Open Collective, and they do all the logistic. And WordPress community has uh, their own project there. So there are two important things for this platform. First, it has done all the logistic to support anyone anywhere in the world. So that is not a problem anymore. The other very important step, uh, thing here is that anyone, individuals and organizations can support, can give their finance there. So right now uh, we have a few individuals who are doing that. Thank you so much. And we have um, Automatic actually uh, gave $2,000. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so my question is, uh, this is all beautiful, you know, individuals who are more fortunate supporting others. But when you really think of it, it's us paying ourselves. So my question is, can you, as Matt, Giuseppe, uh, Matthias, or you as Automatic, encourage other companies to 
do the same as Automatic did and make this more sustainable? And what can we yes. as a community do to make these uh, donations from other organizations consistent so we can you know, continue doing this? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I feel like I, I've looked at the Open Collective thing, but I haven't, I'm not current on it, so I'll definitely check it out after this. Uh, thank you for letting everyone know about it. I'm glad that we're already supporting it, though. <laughs> um, I, I will say that I, I just want to add on, because that was more of like an introduction than a question. Um, yes, uh, as we talk about Five for the Future, which for those who aren't familiar, it, it's this concept that for companies um, to maintain the commons of WordPress, uh, we have this kind of social norm, social moray, that like uh, companies, if you're getting something from WordPress, uh, try to take 5% of that and put it back into the core or the community or the .org or the WordCamps or the whatever it is. And it's deliberately um, a little amorphous because how people might define it um, could be different. And definitely taking currency hard dollars and putting it back into a system like Open Collective is an amazing way for anyone to, to get back. But I also want to recognize, like, you know, if people are taking, you know, uh, out of 40 hour a week, two hours a week <laughs> to, to uh, volunteer, or companies that, you know, have 100 people and have five of them working full time on core, you know, all of these different methods of contributing, um, it's really the flywheel that makes WordPress work. And I think the reason that we've been able to say, because so many open source projects, including many who started around the same time of us, had a trajectory of like some growth and then they kind of withered on the vine. And I think what happened was there was too many people taking from the commons and not putting, putting back in. And so the community spirit of WordPress is I think one of the reasons it's been able to not just be successful, but actually accelerate over the years. So, uh, yeah, thank you for telling us about this. And come on down, I'll give you yeah. this uh, little pop socket thing. Well, that's happening. I'm going to add a. <laughs> going to add to thank the you. answer. Um, also, some of you who were here last year or watched the presentation last year also know that we created the sustainability channel uh, right in the middle of the presentation. <laughs> um, and that particular group has become a team. And one of the things that I asked them to do at Contributor Day this year was to help us figure out how to do that part of the question, how to answer that part of the question, help com companies know how to find people who need to be sponsored, help people who want to be sponsored get paired with, with companies. Because right now, basically, you go to me or Matt, and we help you find the other side of it. And that is not sustainable either. Um, and so you, that in, in case you didn't hear the wrap up for that, the sustainability team is working on sustainability as far as like the software goes from an ele electricity standpoint, sustainability for our gatherings, making sure that we're using our materials to the best of our ability. And then I asked them to add in that part also to make sure that we as a community remain sustainable for as long as we possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> We go over here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. My name is Birgit Olsen from Germany, and I have a question to our WordPress community leadership, you. Um, how do you think we can evolve as a community in creating more diversity, equality, and inclusivity uh, in our environment, in a whole WordPress community? We have the WP Diversity Working Group to. Uh, encourage people to speak and make more, but I think more broader and to also make kind of a um, deputy program to ensure that diversity and equality and inclusivity is, is met not only on word camps, but also meetup groups, but also in the contributing groups. So yeah. how do you think can we do better in a community and what do you think is a leadership is possible to create some kind of committee or um, deputy program to ensure DEI initiatives within the WordPress community? Me? Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Firstly, thank you so much for your question, and also, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, so for folks who have been kind of listening to what we're doing in the WordPress project this year, and certainly who've been watching what Matt or I have been saying in events that we go to, um, we have been asking not only WordPress in our places, but also other projects and other events where we are part of it to help us make sure that like where WordPress is putting its time and attention, it also has good representation. There were a couple of different events that I went to earlier this year where I asked them to please join us in that. But I do also understand that WordPress too, as good as we have become at this, has plenty of distance to go. Because when you have things that are imbalanced, you always have to work to maintain the balance even once you've gotten to it. Like the work is ongoing. And so there are many initiatives. I, personally don't know the names of all of them, but I know that I have currently a proposal on my desk for exactly this type of team. Um, and I've been working with them kind of to review what they're proposing, review what would make that sustainable as far as a team goes. But also um, we have a couple of other initiatives based on the feedback that you all gave us about um, representation on the stage, representation in our contributor spaces, and also just generally making sure that we have some connection to the groups that we know that we're missing and the groups that we need to hear from that we don't know are missing yet. And so I appreciate this question and the fact that you all always work to help keep us accountable to that. And you know, like you said, just because we have this answer, this thing, that project, doesn't mean that we think we're done with it. And so I hope that is an answer. I'll also add that this is something, it's kind of an exciting question because it's not just, even if we create this committee or something, this is actually something that every single person here in this room can contribute to. Yes. And one of the things that makes me most proud is when I hear folks come up to me and say, I came to a work camp and I felt so welcome. You know, and there's so many, especially in, in these modern times when there's so much division, so much acrimony, um, to have a community of people around a shared idea, ideal of uh, democratizing publishing and open source come together and be welcoming. And so something every single person here can do is, you know, whenever you see someone who might, you know, seem like they're on the edges or might need some help or something like that, like, how can I make this person feel welcome? And just, if you're always, if every one of us is always asking ourselves that, um, we will continue to be the type of community that, uh, has all types of people. And if I can give a fast example that I saw specifically for this event, there were people who are coming here or who are not here at all in watching via live stream mm -hmm. who shared suggestions about how to do that while you are an attendee. So I think mm -hmm. Matt Cromwell maybe was like, if you see somebody and you don't know that you know their name or they know your name, like just go ahead and proactively tell them who you are, <laughs> introduce yourself, especially if you're in the introvert group. We have to look after our, our, our extroverts. We have to look after our introverts. But then also we have people who tweet like, don't forget the Pac-Man rule when you go to WordCamps, like leave a space for someone to oh, join. Yeah. Like people, even when they're not here, are looking out for the ways that we can make those small impacts. So absolutely, I agree. And you want to come down and get a little pop socket? Or can someone take it to her? <laughs> sure. Thanks. Thank you. Chris. Thank you. Hi, people. Hello. My name is Matteo, M-A-T-T-E-O for the subscribers. Hi, subscriber. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Josefa. Hello, Hi, Mattia. Uh, so, ba no, no, not E. It's M-A-T-T-E-O. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, because... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, I was... I was. Um, I wanted to, to ask two uh, questions so much fast. I hope to be like as speedy as I can. First, are you uh, Matt? Are you Matt, Stutzefa, and Mattia? Are you going into the to the other party today? Second yeah. question yes. is <laughs> definitely. Um, I'll see you all there. <laughs> second question is, I actually love all the updates that Gutenberg is doing. Uh, a real problem to me now is that I actually have all the, the tools to create a great design, but since I'm not a designer, I really don't know what to build. Oh. So are you, are you preparing something like AI or something like that? Or also suggestion, also 
approaches because that's um, pattern are a, a good start. But I hope that you may that we as a community create something more for this approach. Oh, and uh, for instance, congratulations for the videos. It was like an Apple event or something like that. So <laughs> yeah. They're down here, the people who did that. It was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for the question. I think it's a, it's a really like a great, like you, you mentioned like patterns are sort of in that area, but I think there's so much that we can do to, right now like the pattern gallery is really growing in size, but like really to, to use pattern as a way to teach design and to make sure that it, I don't know, if you're composing something and you write a few blocks that we can suggest you like, oh, there's a pattern that is presenting these blocks in a certain way that combines this in, in, a, in a good way. I think there's a lot that we can do there. Um, we haven't really, we started exploring like transformations you can do when you select multiple blocks. I think a, AI has really like, a, um, there's a good place there to experiment with because you can, you can imagine like from what you're writing, like we can connect to this relatively large library of designs and sort of combine them in an interesting way. Also transformations of them, like if you want to cycle between different patterns. I think that's the, to me, the, one of the ultimate goals of patterns is to like bring these tools to people. Like you say, maybe you don't have like a design background, but if WordPress can offer you like the best design from the community, from all the designers all over the world, like, and I think that's the other part, like it's also not like one specific design, but a really diverse set of design perspectives across the world. I think that's, patterns are really the communication layer there, but I think we need to do more to combine them in interesting ways, surface them at the right time, uh, guide you when you're creating a page, like these are the sections, these are like the elements that you put in this way or that way. Um, and do you know how many like block themes we have so far? How many block, block patterns? Mm -hmm. uh, block themes. Block themes. Oh. Anyone down there? No off the top of your head? Over 300? Over 300, Thank yeah. You. What do you think the future of themes is going to be? Easy question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think like part of what the video captures, I think is that, or tries to capture is that there's sort of like a shape shifting between like each theme into the next. Mm. Um, and the idea there is to communicate that um, it's all part of the same sort of experience and UI. So it's like the whole point was that to get people to not have to learn how to do things in so many different ways. So like, it's not so much like having like one theme, it's just like, you can combine them with like, what are the patterns, the style variations, the theme, and it's, it's all compatible with each other. You can replace the header of your theme with a header that you like from another theme, and it's just fits. Yeah, I used to hear from users that they would like the typography of one theme. Exactly. But then the colors of another theme, yeah. and they were having to choose between them. Yeah. And like your sheep photo. The sheep photo that yeah. people loved in, a, yeah. was that 2010 or something? Mm -hmm. The photo I took out yeah. when I was with Donica in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, but it was, yeah, I think it's actually gonna be a real challenge for us that we need to figure out because now that themes allow so much customization is how to show that when you're choosing a theme, uh, you can actually have yeah. almost infinite variations of typography, color, and sometimes even layouts uh, from them. Yeah. And maybe what we call a theme needs to sort of have like a baseline. Maybe it's sort of more about the layouts yeah. and then the colors into typography is always interchangeable. Yeah, yeah and then with tools like the style book, you should be able to see like, oh, I really like the style that this theme has for the quotes and I want to use that. And where I want to like grab like different, combine them in different ways. I think all of that is started to open up. Like, we didn't show it there, but we have like some really cool flows for previewing themes and previewing styles and the patterns that themes packages. I think it's getting into a really like interesting. interesting and with the playgrounds, now we can, yeah. we don't need just, just to have some static screenshots, you know, in, yeah. the, yeah. The, in the theme <laughs> folder, <laughs> you know, like we originally had. It can really be fully interactive uh, previews, which has always been one of the coolest things that you can, for any WordPress theme, you can click preview and see your whole site mm -hmm. totally reimagined. What Thank you so much for that question. Yeah. And I've got your... Uh... <laughs> and again, if you don't have an iPhone, you now have like a magic token. So you can re-gift this to someone who, uh, who you, you appreciate or has done something for WordPress or uh, whatever. Question on this side.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello. First of all, I would like to say a massive thank you for Rich and every one of you who participated in this conference and who organized it and who made it so amazing. That's such an honor for us to be a part of it again. I'm a member of a web design studio from Ukraine and you can only imagine how important it is to us uh, to feel welcomed and supported on each and every step of the way. Wow. So, thank you. Wow. Um, so thank you so much. I, I'm curious, who, who is here? You're here from Ukraine? Yes. Who else is here from Ukraine? So, guys. Wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Woohoo! Slava Ukraini. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you so much. So, my question is, like, the Gutenberg has been a hot topic for such a long time, and we've seen, like, a massive change that it created, and now every bit of information is about AI. So our company has been developing an AI software that will help, basically, any firm, a company who deals with um, customer support and make it automatic. So it's called Subpilot for everyone. And my question is, how do you, how soon do you see this Gutenberg and AI integration and what should we expect in this term? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> in my entire career in technology, which is about 20 years now, <laughs> uh, I've never seen things moving as quickly as they are right now. It's really incredible and it feels like Entire years of progress are happening in weeks or months um, in, the AI, in the AI field. And uh, so I think that some really cool stuff is shipping. I actually, just a few days ago, Jetpack uh, AI launched with a number of blocks and everything. Uh, we're still figuring out pricing models and usage models and everything for this new technology. Um, but the, the other exciting thing is that, like, the demos are amazing, like check out the Jetpack AI stuff. And, and it's not just the demo, you can actually run it today and it can create content and, and very soon it'll be able to like create blocks or maybe entire themes. You can already ask ChatGPT to write WordPress plugins <laughs> and they, they execute. It's weird. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's read all of WordPress's code, it's read all the 55,000 plugins and themes. Um, so it, it already knows us, you know? And that's why I think, I've said it many, many times, but I believe that the two mega trends of the next 20 years are going to be open source and AI. And they're highly complementary. Because mm -hmm. when you think about it, AI is going to want to, as AI is building things, it's going to do it on open source frameworks and technologies for obvious reasons. The same reason we all love <laughs> open source. Um, I guess the final thing I'll say is what's exciting is like the, the really cool stuff we're seeing is the worst stuff we're going to see. <laughs> it's going to get so good so fast. So w I think we're still on like the MS-DOS command line versions of this. <laughs> but like literally later this year, I think it's going to get much better. And I think, you know, as we start to look to like this time next year when we're back, have we announced where work camp's going to be next year? Nope, nope. Oh, I, won't, I won't spill it then. <laughs> 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 what do they say? Uh, <laughs> no. Wordpress, WordPress or automatic. It's a ship that leaks from the top. <laughs> 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 so, the, uh, <laughs> the, it's, it's, I, I can't wait to see what's going to be around. And um, it's going to put so much power that it's a very democratizing technology. It's um, just like one of the most beautiful things about technology is like, um, you know, Tim Cook's iPhone is not better than the iPhone that you or I have. And how amazing is that? Um, so, like, we all have access at some level to, to these technologies. And, you know, for free now on BARD, ChatGPT, other things, we can all get access to essentially the most advanced new intelligences in the world. And it does almost feel like we're, we're creating a new intelligence, or I won't call it a form of life, but definitely a form of new intelligence. So um, if, you know, I think I said this, but you know, in 2016, I came on stage, I was like, learn JavaScript deeply. That's right. <laughs> and um, it, it, that's actually gone pretty well, so thank you. Good job. <laughs> um, we, like, 
basically most new code in WordPress now is JavaScript. Yeah. And what we've done with Gutenberg and everything has been pretty incredible. And, um, and obviously JavaScript has become kind of the standard of uh, most modern development. Um, I would encourage everyone here in this room to be playing with these tools. Uh, play with ChatGPT, play with other AI tools. The open source stuff is catching up really quickly. And um, I, I would encourage you all to be spending at least a few hours a week um, following up and, and just honestly just playing with it. It's an amazing personalized tutor. You can use it to ask questions. You can use it for rewriting your post. There's just, it's the possibilities are endless. And as you get better and better, just like in the early days, like, some people were better at Googling than others, and that was kind of a competitive advantage, what they call prompt engineering, or talking to the AI, and asking it what to do in an intelligent way. You can get amazing results. So if you, if you try it out and it doesn't do what you want, um, keep trying, <laughs> keep playing with it, and like look up some of these things. Um, I feel like this capability is gonna be as important as like literacy or typing or something like that, the ability to leverage these AIs. So everyone, learn AI tools deeply. <laughs> we also, yeah. <laughs> there is also a, a current, and I think currently active, discussion happening about AI in WordPress, particularly um, someone on our social and or things team will uh, share that, that link, but there's an active discussion at the moment, so you can join that as well. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Adam. I've been doing some work on WordPress Playground, and I don't have a question. I just wanted to share something I'm excited about that I'm just starting to realize during this conference. Because WordPress Playground is WordPress running in JavaScript, it brings WordPress to all the devices where we could run JavaScript apps, which means you can build a native mobile application using WordPress Playground, ship it in App Store, a tablet app, yeah. a desktop app. My colleague Ella sitting over there, she's working on a notes application mm. that allows you to uh, write cool. notes in Gutenberg and then synchronize them over all your devices. So mm. we may see the entire WordPress ecosystem storming over the, all, all the devices that we're using every day. <laughs> storming <And> over devices. <laughs> WordPress will be everywhere. Yes. Yay! <laughs> so imagine building a mobile app that's just a WordPress plugin and then you just ship it on all the devices. And, mm, oh, yeah, uh, and maybe even creating it in Gutenberg by clicking things, and if you want to change how it looks, just apply a different theme. So, just something I wanted to share. Thank you. Just spend, spend a day in that room. <laughs> Hello, my name is Patricia. I'm from Geneva in Switzerland. I'm a contrib uh, community contributor by organizing local uh, meetups and world camps. Um, my you. question is the usual suspect in Europe, at World Camp Europe. Is it Can GDPR or multilingual? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the second one. Uh, <laughs> I guess. So, basic, basically. <laughs> Basically, a lot of people are eager to know uh, an approximate ETA for the end of phase four or when we will be able to use multilingual in the good and bad editor or the good and bad project. Huh. Wow. <laughs> Predict the future. When do, I think we said something on stage before, do you recall? We said phase three was starting phase next year. Phase three we're starting now. Like, but we're starting it this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. After 6.3, we'll start with phase three properly. I think there's enough overlap there that we can start getting a clearer sense of when uh, phase four can happen. I think it's also good, like, for example, we're thinking about, like, well, I don't know, in, like, five years, where, like, AI for translation, where it's going to be, like, and yeah. how can we, like, make sure that we're building towards... For that like, leapfrog, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're like, we're not um, getting too ahead of ourselves in the... Um, but it's, like... I think like maybe next year like we can start with some. And I think you have a community uh, exploration plugin that's kind of taking a look at that. Not you, Patricia. You, Toby, next to you. I yeah, think that's right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, Sorry, everyone who's I, watching this. I yeah, just, actually, that was yeah, the worst. You brought up Sorry. my question from last year. Uh, yeah. I was planning to say, Matt, that okay, uh, oh. I can talk more about that thing with you after consuming at least one ticket tonight. 
I hope it will digest well that ticket over. <laughs> um, but oh. yes, it, I get the feeling now that when you're talking about multilingual, you're talking about some machine translation and you want it to be good yeah, enough. So, so but uh, when I hear that, I tremble a bit because to me, machine translation, yes, it is get there, getting better by the week. But my view is, and a lot of people are with me on this, that it always needs to be checked by a human yeah. before you publish yeah. it. And therefore, um, I don't see a reason to delay the multilingual part of uh, WordPress core too much because it's yeah. more about making a decision and then and, just and put it there. And just to clarify, we're, it's not, um, we're not delaying. So WordPress is fundamentally trying to be a content management system for everything. And so the, the complexity of multilingual becomes that now every single object in WordPress, categories, tags, blocks, everything, uh, which right now is kind of like a one-to-one -one relationship or, you know, the data types has to become a many-to-many -many relationship. Yeah. That's part of why we have to do collaboration and workflow before we get to multilingual because we need to have workflows for how when something is changed in one language, it flows to another language. So we're very much now whether you're choosing machines or humans to do the translation, that's up to the site owner. Um, I 100% agree with you that I think that for many, many, many publishers, you know, across Europe for many, many reasons, it, it will be human driven. Maybe they'll use a machine to accelerate the human, but like you still want a person kind of saying like, this is the content that, that we're publishing on the website. You're not just going to take what's automatically generated. So, um, it's, but it, it adds, uh, a multifactorial level of complexity to all of our data models <laughs> and doing that right is part of, uh, is, is going to be the most complex thing we've ever done in WordPress. Yeah. And so that's why we're, we're really, um, I, I would actually extend Matias's timeline. <laughs> Sorry. Before we move on, I, I think we need like 12 to uh, 18 to 24 months of phase three before we can really start breaking apart the data models in WordPress. And we need to figure out how to do so in a backwards compatible way, which is going to be, you know, because we, yeah. we go backwards compatible basically to like WordPress 0.72. So it's like 2003. So we, we need to, um, we need to figure that out. Before we move on to your answer of that, Patricia, I want to help you reclaim your time and make sure your question got answered. I messed that up. I'm sorry. Did your question get answered with that? Y yes. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, I just want to say also that's that's why like it was important to like conclude phase two where we're like essentially making all the aspects of your website accessible to people so they can edit it. Once we model all of that, then we'll have a better idea of like how can we make all these objects also like translatable in, in multilingual ways. And we're still like a, at contributor day. We were like. Um, sort of tossing some ideas on how to connect custom fields with blocks. And so then, like, once we add that dimension, we also need to think about, okay, what's going to be the multilingual story of custom fields when they are connected with blocks? Mm -hmm. So it's, like, it's important to get, like, the base layer in a, in a good place, um, start developing some of these collaborative editing ideas, because I think many things will start falling into place um, much better. And, and also, I think it, we really rely on all the community explorations that are already going around, like how to approach, how to do multilingual. It's yeah. not just a, I think that really gives us a sense of like, which paths are working best, what things are resonating with people and so on. That's important to see. And the architecture is going to be so tricky. Like I literally stay up at night thinking about this sometimes <laughs> because like, do we, do we do it in a single site model and then make the data structures much more complex or do we basically do a multi-site model where each language is like a, a separate WordPress in the multi-site and then have some way to synchronize them and have workflow between them um, and permissioning <laughs> between them so that they sort of appear yeah. as one site to the user or as a multilingual site. But in the back end, we're, we're doing essentially a multi-site, which I, I think might be a good approach, but I, I don't want to say that is the right approach because I think we really need to spend many, many hours like yeah actually kind of building some of these different approaches and just trying them out, looking at all the plugins out there and like yeah. seeing what, because performance is going to be so important. Yeah. And so we, you know, WordPress is getting faster and faster with every release. We want to make sure as we add this complexity that we don't slow it down. Yeah. 
Also, like the translation UI, there's really cool explorations happening on the GlotPress side on mm. how to translate the software itself, like more the interface, not the content. But there's a lot that we can take from that experience. That, that's something I think we can get going much earlier to get like information on what works for translators, what's the best user experience, and so on. If someone can that share back. that live translation link, I don't know it off the top of my head, or I would say it, that would be excellent. I don't know why I'm looking up there. There's someone down here. <laughs> Folks, I keep cool. gesturing to our committers and team reps that are down here to help me answer. All right, question over there. Oh, we're going to go upstairs. Thank Hello. you. Hello. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Michelle. I'm up here. <laughs> Michelle Frechette, here in New York. And my question has to do with mentorship. No panacea for inclusion. Uh oh, it's it's cutting out. Yeah. If you, you said I, I heard you say there's it. no panacea for mentorship no, and inclusion. And there's then... sorry. <laughs> there's no panacea for mentorship, inclusion, and getting the next generation of people into WordPress, but mentorship can be one way to help people into the community. I think we do a really good job of our release squads with shadowing and mentorship there. With my side projects that I have, I'm always being asked to add mentorship to those things, but my projects are small by comparison to all of WordPress. So do we have any ideas or plans for official mentorship programs in the WordPress community? I do. <laughs> I'm dying to hear them. Thank you. It's a great question. Anyone want to take this before I take it, just in case? Go for it. You Great. seem ready to go. Wonderful. So, yes, I'm so excited. So, for the most part, when I talk to people who are currently contributing to WordPress or tried to contribute to WordPress and kind of took a break, one of the things that makes the biggest difference is whether or not they found someone to mentor them. They don't always call it a mentor. They sometimes call it a buddy or they're like, oh, so-and-so is just like, hey, that looks like you are worried about asking dumb questions. Ask them to me. I'm, I'm happy to help. Like, those are always, every time I talk to contributors, the thing that makes the biggest difference for people who want to stay for a long time. And so we do. We have a trial program right now happening. So in our Five for the Future uh, program, we have um, a trial, uh, a pilot program, I think that's launching today, did launch yesterday? July launching 12th. July 12th, where we have asked those companies that are part of the Fight for the Future program, as part of what they're giving back, be mentorship of especially underrepresented voices. Uh, but anybody who's trying to get started as an individual contributor in the WordPress project, I think it's very exciting, but I also think it's going to take a lot of time and attention and resources to get it right. And so for anyone who also feels like, gosh, I really succeeded because of this one person or these three people that really helped me to figure out where I was going versus where I wanted to go, go check it out. Someone's going to share it also on social media so that we can see um, the pilot and keep an eye on how we can help get that done. But absolutely, 100%, I will, I will do that until we can't figure out how to do anything better about it. I agree. Hi, my name is Jonathan. Um, I'm a member of the training team, and uh, I work with a few other contributors in the training team creating content specifically for, for our extender community, so plugin developers, theme developers, anybody writing code. Um, and one of the questions I get a lot from folks is, does WordPress have an engineering best practices document, handbook, whatever the case may be? And I know that we don't, so I will usually send them things like WordPress VIPs, engineering best practices, uh, human made, 10 up, all those enterprise level sort of agencies that have those best practices. My question is, do you think as an open source project we should have a best practices document? Huh. Uh, if you don't, why? And if you do, what should we start doing to make it happen? <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I don't know, like my, my impression is that I think that it's um, it's very important to have like these, the, the ones you mentioned around like the, the extended ecosystem, having like a bit more opinionated things and see like more than the core project having like too strong opinions on some things. Um, 
But it's a balance. I think like well, we don't have like a super formalized things. I think it's important to have like um, I don't know, similar to like Apple's human interface guidelines, things that we can do for, um, well, these are the things that we have learned and we want to encourage other to do, like when you're developing a blog, when you're developing a plugin or a theme, we do some of those things through, um, but I think there's, there's always a risk to become like too prescriptive and stifling some of the innovation and exploration and diversity that can happen in the ecosystem. So I think that's the, balance that we need to achieve. Um, I wouldn't be like super categorical on one way or the other. I think it's good to be thinking about it and bringing it up and, and also learning from like, if there's something that, again, human mail or other agencies or TenUp are coming up that really works and it's really like, we can bring it back in. Um, but I think it's important to not be too, um, yeah, too stifle with, with us. Cool. I know we're running out of time, but we have a lot more questions. Should we try to go through them quickly or how, how are we doing? Do we need to end right up? Five, or can we go a few I extra saw minutes? a shaking head and a nodding head. Okay, we go a few extra minutes. So uh, let's try to go through the, the remaining ones quickly. So we'll do the people who are still at the mic, okay. and then uh, those will be the last questions. Okay. So. Okay, hello, I'm Toby, a global mentor for the polyglots. First, I have a quick question to the room. Who here does not have English as their native language? Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so um, the point I want to make with this is that um, for WordPress mission to stay true about democratize publishing, we really need to make sure that WordPress becomes available uh, in a lot of different languages. And we are doing that already. Uh, and we are trying step by step, but it's hard to add more languages. But what I see now is that there are so many different teams struggling with how to get their content translated and these translations maintained. I'm talking about tr training, I'm talking about uh, documentation, um, subtitling, um, uh, developer, I mean, so many different things. And um, we need to create some new or additional way of handling these translations in an efficient and smart way. And my quick question probably to Josefa is, do we have the full support from the project? We may need financial support, we may need some organizational support in actually making this happen. I mean... I always hesitate to say that you have my full financial support, <laughs> which is what you asked. But in general, you always have, I mean, our polyglots always have my full support to make sure that what you need, that I can provide, that WordPress can provide, that the community can provide, that you should have it. Um, I, I know that sometimes it feels like you all come to me with questions and I'm like, I'll come back to you. And then a week later, I'm like, hey, you might have forgotten, but I said I'd come back and here I am. Like, there's just a lot of things that are, that are part of it. So I will not pledge anything that I will not be able to actually get my hands on, but obviously you all have my full support to get efficient stuff accomplished. Yeah, so um, you heard her, right? We're gonna jump to another question though, just Yeah, sure, sure, I'm just quickly. saying we are going to need other people's support as well, because with only one person's support, it won't work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Language. It's really great being here and asking questions again. I'm Courtney Robertson, I'm at GoDaddy. I am also a part of the training team. Um, and last year at the same conference, I asked about uh, getting multilingual working inside of Learn WordPress. Happy to report a year later, we've got many languages. It's not elegant, it's all in the same site and it's not ideal. But uh, there was a great meeting that during Contributor Day, I worked with Toby and a few others for improving that. So ask your questions because you will see progress. Mm. My question today uh, it revolves around, I was part of a talk in the WP Connect session on funding open source M5 for the future. And it's very, very deeply personal to me in my journey through WordPress and to where I am now. And I am one of the founding members of the WPCC and I'm happy to have those conversations to explain further what's going on with that. Um, I've had people ask, even last year, Europe was my first time to take a, last year's Europe was my first time to take a plane to get to a WordCamp. And there I met Sean from American Eagle, 
and he was sharing with me that it's hard to bring from their organization, it's hard to bring contributors in to do something for a particular length of time because without it being organized like they're used to internally working as a team in sprints, that gets a little bit lost. And this idea came up again yesterday and could we do it in a way that is open and inclusive that maybe organizations could be a little more, they would have more transparency of exactly where across our now 22 teams, we have 22 of them now, huh. um, so across the 22 teams, could we see that plug and review was needing some more staff? Could we have a public way of seeing where the needs are across the teams and maybe some initiatives that we certainly wouldn't want to be exclusive, but could bring some clarity or organization that for this period of time, maybe between the holidays, some companies have slumps at that time. Maybe between their holidays, they could dive in and do a thing during that time and then move on for a, a little bit and then come back again. So ways of creating opportunities in unique ways of contributing that would not be exclusive by any means. Um, and again, I think elevating that transparency of what the teams need would perhaps open up more of that staff labor and funding directly to help contributors. Yeah. I, I have a quick answer here, which is an idea I've been thinking about. Um, and, and we'll try to keep this short. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, in organizations where I see this work well is you change what you measure. And one thing I'd love to get more on WordPress.org is some sort of like dashboards, essentially. Like we have the download counter, we have some stats for plugins and other things, but like, like uh, what if you could kind of look across the 22 teams and each of those 22 teams had some metrics attached? and like a health metric. And you know, this was how many work camps there were last year, or this year, or whatever. Each team can define its own metrics, but then there was kind of like a, a red, yellow, green for how things were going. Um, I think that would be really powerful. And then, you know, that'd be fun for and motivating, I think, for everyone working on it. And then also if you're coming in and you're like, okay, what needs help? Look at the red stuff. So uh, just wanted to plant that seed of an idea in everyone's mind. Thank you. Hello. Um, I am Kamrul Islam. I came from Bangladesh, uh -huh. and I have a, I have two questions. Tiny question. Uh -huh. First one is, will you add volunteer badges on WordPress or profile? And my second question is, can I take a selfie with you guys right now? <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, go ahead and take the selfie while I answer your first question. <laughs> oh, you're going to come up. Oh, up here. Oh, maybe don't come up on stage. But, uh, you can do it from here. And I will definitely be at the party. And by the way, I love meeting people. I love taking pictures. So, <laughs> all right. So while, while you're doing that, <laughs> um, the, the, it's a quick one. Yes, we can definitely add volunteer badges to the profile pages. And I think actually WordPress.org profiles are going to get way cooler yes. over the next year. Uh, I was just actually talking to Yost about some ideas around that earlier. So um, definitely something I want to work on. Thank you. So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Rao uh, from Libya, and I have a couple of really quick questions. Uh, first one is uh, recently I started uh, with, with, uh, with three of my friends. We started a web designing startup. And uh, now that we're here in WordCamp Europe, I couldn't pass on the opportunity to ask the great Matt for his advice for us. Um, second question is, now with the release of Gutenberg, and uh, now without bearing into mind that uh, WordPress is a privately traded company, Matt, do you have any plans to take the company public? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's all Matt, that's Ooh. all Matt. Uh, and so to clarify, WordPress is an open source thing. Uh, Automatic is probably what you might have been referring to, is a, is a privately traded company. Uh, and then advice for a web design startup? Yeah. Um, sure. So um, for automatic, I'll, I'll just say that it's, it's great having flexibility. So we're lucky to have like great long-term investors. Mm -hmm. um, I do wish that more of the WordPress community could, could own a chunk of automatic and, and just like you can own many other companies uh, in the WordPress space. Um, there's something nice about that. So that's the one thing that would make me want <laughs> to be more uh, public. But other than that, I would say that the flexibility that's allowed for us to make very, very long-term bets as a private company is really nice. All right, thank you so much. As a, as a web design company, I would say, um, I would repeat what I said earlier around learning that you, to leverage AI tools. And also remember that 
What you're charging for is not how long it takes you to do it or what it costs, but the value you're generating for your clients. So charge based on that value. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate okay. the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Looks and like then finally, one. raise your prices. Almost everyone should raise their prices. <laughs> I think we have one last question. One last question. All right. Bring it home. Hello. Thank you. My name is Piotrek, and I just came from the sustainability workshop. And cool. there was a very specific question that just uh, we came up with. Uh, is it possible to make one simple change uh, in terms of where all the files for the WordPress repository are stored? So that would definitely be a one step further to make it you know, more sustainable, yeah? to choose the proper storage that would uh, generate less CO2. So if that thing is possible. To change where the WordPress is filed? So like, I'm not sure if I understand. Uh, we were thinking about many ways of how we can decrease the CO2. Yeah? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. this is like minimizing the file size of the WordPress itself as a file. Oh. To download. <laughs> and then all of the plugins, oh. all of the other files, everything that is running our yeah. uh, ecosystem. I, the good news is that um, Moore's Law and other things is, is on, the, on our side. You know, WordPress is getting faster, more efficient. The, if you added up all the WordPresses in the world, it's probably like less than one like, container boat or something <laughs> of CO2 emissions. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I would say I'm a, a technological optimist in this regard. There's obviously so much work we need to do around carbon capture and other things, but I think we are on the cusp of abundant clean energy and, um, and that many of these issues we've been dealing with over the past hundred years, um, hopefully we can start to reverse. So that, that's my optimism. That's actually a good place to end. Yes. A very optimistic Matthias, note. So thank you. Matt, Josepha, thank you all. Stay around for closing remarks. Thank you.